everyone to today's lesson on qualitative graphs. In our last lesson, we were learning to graph quadratic functions. This lesson will also be dealing with graphs. However, these graphs will be a bit simpler. If I do a good job, by the end of this lesson, you'll be able to tell me what a qualitative graph is, describe a qualitative graph, and sketch a qualitative graph for a situation. To start off, let's learn what a qualitative graph is. Qualitative graphs are graphs used to represent situations that may not have numerical values or graphs that don't any, include any numbers. Since qualitative graphs don't have any numbers, we don't have to do much math when we're working with them. One thing we need to be able to do when working with qualitative graphs is be able to describe the changes that they are displaying. For example, in this graph, we see that the y-axis represents temperature and that the x-axis represents time of day. We can see that the graph starts out by increasing, then it reaches a high point and begins to decrease. What this is telling us is that early in the day, the temperature is low and slowly increases as the day goes on. Then at about the middle of the day, the temperature begins to decrease again. Now let's look at some practice problems that might help us practice working with qualitative graphs. Here's our first qualitative graph problem. It says, use the graph to determine the behavior of the function between the indicated points. When it says behavior of the function, all it really is talking about is whether it's increasing, decreasing, or if it is staying constant, meaning it's not changing at all. So as we look at the different segments here, when we look from A to B, we see that from A to B, it is increasing. The graph is moving upward, so it's increasing. From section B to C, we see that it's staying at the same level. It's going straight across, which means that the graph is staying constant. Then from C to D, we see that it's going way down. It's dropping way down, which shows us that it is decreasing. And then again, from D to E, we can see that the graph is going up. Here in this problem, you can see that we've got a scenario that it's set for us, and we need to choose the graph that is going to best represent that scenario. In scenario number one, it says a bird flies away from the nest to go hunting. And on our graphs, we have two things that are measured, the bird's distance from the nest and the amount of time that has gone by. Now, if you think about it, what's going to happen is a bird flies away from the nest. Well, its distance from the nest is going to increase. And the longer it flies, the further that, or the higher that distance is going to increase. So we're looking for a graph that is increasing because that distance from the nest is going to increase the longer the bird is flying. So <clears throat> I look over my graphs. My first graph has a line going straight up and down. So the time isn't moving, but the distance from the nest is. However, when the bird's flying, time is going to be moving. So that one doesn't work. The only one of these four graphs that actually shows an increase is the second one. So that would be our most appropriate graph to represent this situation. The second problem asks us to represent the situation. A car slows down as it approaches a stop sign. So this, if we've got a car slowing down, we've got two things being measured on the graph, the car's speed and time. So as the car is going at the beginning of the graph, the car should be moving, so it's going to be going fast. Now, as it approaches the stop sign, it's going to be slowing down. As it slows down, that's going to show a decrease on the graph. So with a decreasing graph, that means that we're going to have <clears throat> it be the graph that shows a decrease, which is right here. For our third problem, we want to look at a problem that requires us to draw a graph of the situation. Now, in this case, we're not going to actually be drawing it. We're going to be choosing from four options, but it would still be the same thing. We're going to look at the situation and see if we could make a qualitative graph for it. Our situation in problem number three says, Elsa leaves her house on her bike. 
She rides at a constant speed until she reaches a lemonade stand where she parks her bike and takes a rest. Then she turns around and bikes home as fast as she can. The first thing we need to pay attention to is how, what things we're measuring in our graphs. The y-axis is going to be measuring the distance from Elsa's house, and the second one is going to be measuring time. So as Elsa leaves her house, her distance from her house is going to grow because she's going to be riding her bike away from her house, so the distance from her house is going to increase. When she parks her bike to take a rest at the lemonade stand, her distance from her house isn't going to be growing at all. It's just going to be staying the same. But time will continue moving on. So this is where it's going to kind of flat line out for a little bit. Then when she jumps back on her bike, she's riding back to her house. So the distance from her house is going to decrease. As we look at these four different graphs, we're looking for the one that is going to increase, then remain the same for a while. And then as time goes on, it's going to get closer to the house because she's going to be going back home. Of the four graphs, the only graph that shows us an increase and then stays the same and then decreases as she rides home is the first graph. That concludes our lesson for today. You should now be able to tell me what a qualitative graph is, describe a qualitative graph, and sketch a graph to represent a situation. Thank you for watching with me, and I hope you'll join us again another time.